Deus Volt, my fellow gamers. Here, we have a box of stuff that just arrived today. And this I'm kind of excited about, kind of, because it should be a very cool uh, thing I'm a lover. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's right. It's the big nasty itself. Okay. <clears throat> so... You know, once again, Troll Horde games. Uh, those guys, just deal with them. Like, you know, I just put this thing on the watch list because it was uh, the cheapest value, or the cheapest one, I should say. And after a while of being on my watch list, Troll Horde games hit me up with a discount. So I'm like, okay, I can't ignore it. It's a good price. So let's pick this beast up. <sighs> yeah. I've got some some cool things coming, uh, but this this is a neat one too. But I've I've got some other cool stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna sneak our blade in here. Back betwixt this, and I like to get between that. It's easy to get into, and you're not gonna hurt the box when you slice between the the flaps. Once again. Very satisfying. Now let's go on the hunt. It's not on the top of the boxes. I don't know why they do that. Why did they fold that in? It's gonna be on the bottom. There she be, the two that I need. <clears throat> okay, it fills up the box a bit more this time. A bit more. Now we have a several baggies. And this should all be, that's a giant baggie, wing of bubbles. And then ahead, and, uh-oh, I see a, a lady vampire. What, what? And a gigantor base. It's a pretty sweet base. Big. Ah, smells good. Smells good. I got my crossbow just for these vampires, just in case they start acting up. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the smaller bits, I guess. Remember, always keep, because you, you see it's got little, little floaters in there. Some of those might actually be fingertips, ear tips, or weapon points or something, so keep those in there just in case. Ah, uh, man, that's a, that's a grudly looking dude. Mm. So, basically idiot proofing the, the assembly. Neat looking. It seems as if we've got, hey, yep, air bubbles on the tips of each one of the horns. I think my my camera lenses are probably a little goobered. Um, there we go. Now, if it's clearer, well, you can kind of see the the air bubbles on the tips of each of those. So that's just something that needs to either be carved or uh green stuffed i guess that's the neck joint got some honking um, gates that need to be removed from there but pretty cool some deep cuts this dude was definitely in the fight he knew it okay we've got a lower jaw there the tongue it, it looks odd, it's like it's either, I mean, sculpted that way, but a tip could be added to that if you wanted to. I think I would rather have a tip added to it because that just doesn't look right. It doesn't look like a, a serpent tongue, you know, you expect it to be fork-tongued or uh, just a single pointy tip, 
but being a lump like that, that's just odd. Anyway, some gate pieces there, the neat trimming. And I did bring some trimmers just so I can get this kind of mess right off the bat. So far, the detail looks good. It doesn't look like any, you know, hardly any um, problems. All right, so this is a glaive end, the vampire type face to it, a little bat face to the front of that glaive. Well, that hand looks like it's holding it down, but we shall see. There is another piece of glaive with a smaller batty blade on the end. Some some gate action there too, supporting the handles, which is good to see. Uh, I'm nice. I'm I'm happy. It's not uh, too broken, except for there. <laughs> it was supposed to be one piece, uh, but it came to me in two pieces, which is okay. Uh, at least it seems like it's a clean break, and it's unlike this spiral column thingy. I don't think that's leather wrapping. I think it's meant to be spinal column handle, which is altogether gruesome and very undead-like. <clears throat> huh. You know, she has her hair in a bun. You don't see many wicked babes with hairs in, in just a simple bun, but there she is. You could throw a pair of spectacles on her and she would be, you know, the dragon riding librarian. So boom, there you go. She's rocking a bun. Okay, very intent on what she's doing. A nice saddle, big chunky saddle, uh, a big, you know, chunky model. Um, the cape looks good, uh, no real damage there. It looks like very good details and uh, a clean model. You know, there's some gates to clean up, but that's no big deal. And I just have to reiterate, you know, how many times do you see a babe rocking out a bun, riding a dragon with a dual-ended glaive? You just don't. It's pretty awesome. She's like a respectable butt kicker. Uh, pretty awesome. All right, so that's bag one. We did have a break, and we've got air bubbles on the ends of all those, but that's okay. Very doable. And very much expected with resin, especially flimsy bits. Now here they, I'm assuming that this is a tail end. Pretty cool looking tail. I'm gonna take homeboy and just do them. So it clearly attaches on the side, which is interesting. We'll have to see how that works. But pretty cool tail. And is there a battle damage on this end? There is, there's one gash right there. This dude was in quite the fight before he was raised from the dead. All right, and big baggy. Now, once again, save these bag bits. You don't know what treasures lurk in there. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. The tail goes up and like so. Okay. <clears throat> we do have some you know, I'll point with a bolt here. So we do have some old lines going in through this, but that's okay because this surface area will have a wing glued to it. So this is the saddle bit, of course, and some more mold lines going in through there. That's a bit chunky, easy to clean off. Ugh. What's nice is you've got these clean ribs, but then you have like visceral inside you have a vein running through and it branches off there. So that could be a gigantic lung or a bit of its stomach. Uh, but very cool visceral lining there. Nice details. Instead of it being a smooth uh, void, something like <coughs> GW would do, um, they actually put detail in it. So that's fantastic. Uh, you do have a fair amount of flash here. Uh, but that is super easy to come off. I just rubbed off a little bit, but you do have it there. Uh, detail on the gore is pretty cool. Uh, this is upsetting here. Okay, you see the, the mold line. And that 
is actually it's so deep of a mold line it's clearly visible on this camera it's so deep of a mold line that's actually like a mold shift um, it's kind of weird how it levels out here on this this leather piece but this is shifted all the material okay this is a front scale here so i'm going to and what's sad is it gets rid of all that fine detail that was on the scale and that is a shame so if you're like me then you'll have to put that detail back in by just scratching the uh, the scale again instead of it being smooth where you had to remove that line you had to scratch down and just follow the detail of the scale here's going to be difficult because they actually have uh, lumpier scales sculpted in and that's going to be a bit more difficult because all this is going to have to be smoothed down a level and what you're going to do is you're going to probably take it at a 45 and carve it and then carve it at more of a 60 after that and then uh, scrape to get more level and then carve in the detail uh, so shame that and what's interesting i don't see it repeated on this side the flashing there but that's easy you know what's only repeated is just this it doesn't repeat over here which actually would be harder to deal with on the crease in here that would be harder to deal with uh, this is kind of exposed it's a bend out so you can get to everything and do what you need to still that it it's not good so but it, it fits on there just fine okay all right now you know we got some heavy work to do on this model which is something i didn't want to do okay wing one lots of gate confused stuff here going on mm, the mod the potato chips of the modeling world right there okay so that snapped off it's okay though it didn't hurt the end talon there on it yeah the wings let's see the mold line would be running straight down and that's not so bad so noticeable no slip molds through there not too bad actually not too bad the gate is doing its job it's keeping these uh, bone spurs good we do have one small air bubble at the tip of that bone spur but yeah not too bad it's got its open gashes its wounds i mean whoever got a hold of this dragon messed it up now all right, once again, I'm going to reiterate, keep the baggie with the resin bits. You don't know if you'll have talon bits in there later on. All right, more potato chips. The flash is just okay. So here we have a clean break, ladies and gentlemen, a clean break of a bone spur. So there's no air bubbles. It does look like it was a break. So I'll be hunting for that piece. If I don't find it, the good thing with the undead army is that you know, it's been hurt a lot, you know. So a broken spur is kind of explanatory. It got in a huge fight. Now here we have a massive air bubble. Uh, at the end of that, you can see how it cups in the shadow made by the cup. Yeah, it's a big one. What I might do is just um, give it some Vs in there. And just make it like it was snapped off and damaged heavily. Um, you can do the same kind of thing with orc models too. Orcs, they fight a lot and they get stuck in. Um, the thing that didn't hurt the claw here. Some air model, uh, air bubbles there. 
Uh, let's see if we can. I'm just going to take that out. Take that out and then. Take that out. Okay. Later on, I'll get in here and fine tune that. Now, do they give me a right and a left? Okay, good. It looks like we have right and left squawkers. So the wings, big wings. You know, the model is weird. I'm going to say it out loud. The model is strange. All right. So you have the worm part, W-Y-R-M, uh, worm. And then wings. So it's not a dragon. It's not a dragon. So dragons in the Western Hemisphere have back legs, four legs, and wings. And big serpentine you know neck thing this thing is barely serpentine what this is is like a flying slug uh, you know eastern dragons they are just they've, they're serpents but they have the back legs and the forelegs they don't have wings to fly they just use their magical poops or whatever they use so this is this is an odd piece and what this is i think is mantic trying to make the most use out of one mold so uh they make the other model it's the white king on a undead worm uh, you know the w-y-r-m and it's this model this base this head this neck the tail bit just sands the wings and i think what they do is they, they give you plugs to plug in here and be like okay there's no wings uh, on their website they do sell a set of resin wings those resin wings right there so that you can make your undead revenant king on a dragon and you know i'm actually kind of glad that i got this because the librarian of doom is pretty a pretty cool sculpt i'm happy with her uh you know she's got some rocking armor there and yeah i'm pretty happy with her sculpt i know i'm gonna be happy with the um the undead revenant it's the revenant not white my fault on a uh on an undead worm oh that's a shame you know so i'll pick him up too uh okay so i just saw something that i don't like okay right under here do you see this glossy piece here yeah, that is a mold failure. So what they did is when they're pulling out several hundreds or thousands of these, how many of these they sell, and however old this mold is, a piece of the mold actually got caught in this. This is a slash mark here for wounds. A piece of the mold got caught, and slowly more mold and more mold was ripped off. And here is the void inside the mold that's being filled with resin but this was supposed to be detail uh so i will have to carve that big honking thing out it's it's pretty pretty large so i have to carve that out and put that slash detail back in it huh. so obviously i wasn't new to the game here what you have to do when you get resin models when, when a company releases resin models buy the things like immediately first run resins are the best you're not gonna have um, these these damaged pieces you're, you shouldn't have uh, much of this split mold stuff but you know it's up to the the batch maker uh, so whoever's in control of the batch but i do have all the pieces here which is good it, minus some forearms and back legs but you know it is what it is it's their take on a dragon uh, so <sighs> yeah, it is what it is i do have a lot of work to do on this main body a little bit of work to do on the wings um, and it's just a weird kit but it's like a centerpiece kit for the army and it's a nice big chunk of resin so happy with that feels good in the hand i like the base um, that's pretty cool. And, of course, the bun lady here. The bun. That's just... It's such an odd choice. <laughs> Either the sculptor didn't want to sculpt a bunch of flailing hair everywhere or crazy hairdos. Um, they just... 
got lazy and did a bun. You know, not too much intimidation. You know, a, a bun in the shape of a skull, or at least with like a skull, vampire fangy skull thing would have been okay, but I don't know, man. A straight bun, such an odd choice. Really strange. It, it's as strange as a dragon that doesn't have arms or legs. You know, it's really blowing my mind. Uh, and these guys, they got kind of chunky heads, but what can you do? He's been, you know, hurt a lot. <sighs> and another thing, it's unusual. Here they have a, a gate end on the tip of the nose. Why they did that, I don't know. That, I mean, they cut it clearly at the, the factory. But why not put the gate down here where even you don't have to be a master to clean it up? You know, put the gate down here, man. Why Why on that such a prominent feature? I don't know. That's just so strange. You have a lot more to clean up here. Do you see that, that big chunk? Very strange. I mean, all in all, cool. I love the resin models, don't get me wrong. But some of the choices are bad. Guys at Mantic, if you guys see this, you know... Uh, Try to fix your mold, man. Nobody wants to dig that thing out, and it's not cool for detail. It's not like, yeah, it's a big scale floating up there because it's right over top of a gash, a wound. So, anyway, uh, I'll be coming at you guys uh, here in a little bit with some other things uh, filtering in. And um, I got a really cool model. I've had it in the past, and I gave it to a buddy of mine that was starting out with Undead. Uh, a good friend of mine, too, or else I wouldn't have given him the thing. But it's a very hard model to come by. Uh, I just scored it last night, and I'm excited for it to come. It's snail bail via Britain, so it'll take a little while, but I'm excited. It is probably one of the very few, if any, uh, Games Workshop models that I will filter into here. But it's a Games Workshop model that I doubt many people have even seen. And it's actually tame. Very well sculpted and uh, most excellent model. Not many were made. So, uh, but anyway, uh, you guys take it easy. Carry a Lazon, and I'll see you next time.